For West Africans, their agriculture is of fairly high description. The noteworthy point about it, however, is the absence of manok. Manoik, manok, man, yok, manioc is grown on Fernando Po, but only by the Portos. The booby cultivated plants are yam, discotera alata, cocoa, uh, co cocolasa asculunto, the taro of the South Seas, and plantains. Their farms are well kept, particularly those in the grass districts by San Carlos Bay. The yams of the Cordillera districts are the best flavored, but those of the East Coast the largest. Palm oil is used for domestic purposes in the usual ways, and palm wine, both fresh and fermented, is the ordinary native drink. Rum is held in high esteem, but used in a general way in moderation as a cordial and treat, for the booby is, like the rest of the West African natives, by no means an habitual drunkard. Gin he dislikes. And I may remark you will find the same opinion in regard to the doula of the, in the Cameroons River, on the undeniable authority of Dr. Bruckner, and my own extensive experience of the West Coast bears it out. Physically, the boobies are a fairly well-formed race of medium height. They are decidedly inferior to the Bengal and Cruz, but quite on a level with the Efkets. The women, indeed, are very comely. Their, their color is bronze and their skin, the skin of the Bantu. Beards are not uncommon among the men, and these that give their faces, possibly more than anything else, a different look to the faces of the Efkis or the Dulas. Indeed, the people are physically most like the people physically most like the boobies that I have ever seen are undoubtedly the Bakwiri of Cameroon Mountain, who are also liable to be bearded, or possibly I should say more liable to wear beards, for a good deal of the African hairlessness you hear commented on. In the, West, in the West African, at any rate, arises from his deliberately pulling his hair out, his beard, mustache, whiskers, and occasionally, as among the fans, his eyebrows. Dr. Bauman, a great authority on the booby language, says it is a Bantu stock. I know nothing of it myself, save that it is harsh in sound. Their method of counting is usually by fives, but they are notably weak in arithmetical ability, differing in this particular from the mainlanders, and especially from their Negro neighbors, who are very good at figures, surpassing the Bantu in this, as indeed they do in most branches of intellectual activity. But the most remarkable instance of inferiority the booby display is their ignorance regarding methods of working iron. I do not know that iron in, in a native state is found on Fernando Po, but scrap iron they have been in touch with for some hundreds of years. The mainlanders are all cognizant of native methods of working iron, although many tribes of them now depend entirely on European trade for their supply of knives, etc., and this difference between them and the boobies would seem to indicate that the migration of the latter to the island must have taken place at a fairly remote period, a period before the iron-working tribes came down to the coast. Of course, if you take the boobies' usual explanation of his origin, namely that he came out of the crater on the top of Clarence Peak, this argument falls through. But he is also another legend, one moreover which is likewise to be found upon the mainland, which says he was driven from the district north of the Gaboon estuary by the coming of the Mapongwe to the coast. And as this legend is the more likely of the two, I think we may accept it is it, it as true, or nearly so. But what adds another difficulty to the matter is that the booby is not is the booby is not only unlearned in iron lore, but he is learned in he was learned in stone, and up to the time of the youth of many of Porto Negroes on Fernando Po, he was making and using stone implements, and none of the tribes within the memory of man have done this on the mainland. It is true that up the Niger and about Benin and Axim you get polished stone Celts. But these are regarded as weird affairs, thunderbolts, and suitable only for grinding up and making into medicine. There is no trace in the tradition of these places, as far as I've been able to find, of any time at which stone implements were in common use. And certainly the Mpongwe have not been a very long time on the coast, for their coming is still remembered in their traditions. The booby stone implements I have seen twice, but on neither occasion could I secure one, and although I have been long promised specimens from Fernando, Fernando Po, I have not yet received them. They are difficult to procure, because none of the present towns are 
really old are really old sites. The booby, like most of the Bantus, moving pretty frequently, either because the ground is witched, demonstrated by outbreaks of sickness, or because another village full of his fellow creatures, or a horrid white man plantation-making, has come too close to him. A Roman Catholic priest in Kakong Kakongo once told me a legend he laughed much over of how a fellow priest had enterprisingly settled himself one night in the middle of a booby village with intent to devote the remainder of his life to quietly but thoroughly converting it. Next morning, when he rose up, he found himself alone, the people having taken all their portable possessions and vanished to build another a village, another village elsewhere. The worthy father spent some time chivying his flock about the forest, but in vain, and he returned home disgusted, deciding that the creator, for some wise purpose, had dedicated the boobies to the devil.